Hello my friends, how are you? It's Brother Ray here. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a blessed and wonderful day. So I'm just on to answer another Bible question or a question pertaining to this statue that is always on the back behind me while I'm making a video. Someone submitted a question and they said, what is that statue? So I said, I'll make a video and post it. So this statue is a very significant statue. This statue symbolizes the history of the earth, believe it or not. And how did we come about with this statue? What is the meaning of this statue? Now, in the year 606 BC, there was a king by the name of Nebuchadnezzar. And King Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon. Babylon was the greatest nation at that time. And King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. Now, if you ever heard the story of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were living in Babylon at that time. And they were wise men. God had blessed them with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, but Daniel also had the ability to interpret dreams. So one night, Nebuchadnezzar being the king that he was of this great nation, and Babylon, where Babylon is, that's somewhere over there by Iraq, King Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom was so beautiful. It was a golden kingdom. It had um, hanging gardens. It had the river Euphrates passing under the city to cool the city. They had lots of... Um, vineyards and gardens and it was a wealthy city so king nebuchadnezzar he wanted to know how long would his city last and it troubled him so god gave him a dream and in that dream the statue that nebuchadnezzar dreamt was an image similar to this statue you can find the story in daniel chapter 2. now what nebuchadnezzar dreamt he dreamt that he dreamt the statue that had a head of gold chest of silver uh ties and uh, ties of brass, legs of iron, and the feet of partly of iron and clay. And as he was dreaming this statue, he dreamt that there was a rock cut out without hands, and this rock came from the mountains and crushed the image on the foot, and the whole statue broke up into pieces and went like chaff on the summer threshing floor, like just blow away in the wind. So this dream troubled Nebuchadnezzar. Now, I'll tell you what these uh, different metals mean because this is what the question was about. What does this statue mean? And this statue is relevant, as I mentioned before, to our history. Now, the head of gold was King Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom. Remember, King Nebuchadnezzar wanted to know how long his kingdom would last. So the head of gold represents Babylon. The chest and arms of silver represents uh, Media Persia. Media Persia conquered Babylon. After Media Persia conquered Babylon, the ties of brass represents Greece. Greece conquered Media Persia. And then we have the legs of iron, which is Rome. Rome conquered Media uh, Greece. And then we have the legs or the feet, sorry, of iron and clay. This represents the Roman nation, and then we have 10 toes with the 10 divided kingdoms of the European nations. So we have the 10 toes representing the 10 kingdoms that were divided, and we also see that the feet has iron and clay, which means that they don't cling together very closely. That's why we're seeing so much division and segregation in Europe even to this day. The nations, they have the same foundation or the same uh, principles, but they don't mix. But then we saw a rock. A rock cut out without hands and it struck the image at the feet and break this whole image up and the image flew away. This rock symbolizes Jesus Christ. Jesus is the rock. And what this rock is talking about, it's talking about Jesus' second coming. When he comes again, he will crush all these kingdoms. Well, at that point in time, there will only be the, the, the ten toes. He will crush that because all these kingdoms have already passed. These kingdoms have already ruled. So this, he will crush it at the feet, destroy this whole uh, history, and create a new history of a new earth. And then this mountain, it says in this rock, in, it says in Daniel chapter 2, grows into a big mountain, which shows that God will establish his kingdom and take away all this worldly kingdom. So that's basically a breakdown of what this statue means. Now, with what I just told you, if you go to the history books and you look this up, it matches exactly the way how God prophesied it to Daniel. Let me give you some dates. 
So um, Media Persia, Media Persia came and ruled in 539 BC, right? The Media Persia conquered Babylon in 539 BC. You can look that up. And then we have Greece. Greece conquered at 331 BC. Uh, Greece conquered Media Persia. And then we have Rome. Rome coming on the scene in 168 BC. And this is all in line with history. The other thing to note about this statue is that every metal, we go from gold to silver to brass to iron, every metal is more cheaper in price, but stronger in strength. So the last one is iron. And indeed, Rome ruled by iron. Um, so the statue that you're seeing in the background, it's not an idol. It's just a statue showing the history of the world according to Daniel, the prophecy of Daniel chapter 2. And I urge and encourage you to read Daniel chapter 2 because as the Bible says, we're living in the last days. So if we're living in the last days and we're preparing for the second coming of Jesus Christ, which is the rock, it means that we're living somewhere right about the tip of the toes, right about there. So we need to be getting ready because the rock of Jesus is coming one day very soon to destroy all of this and to set up his kingdom and to take us to a better place where there'll be no more sickness and no more death. So I hope that that video give you some light on what that statue is. Continue to send your questions and I'll answer them according to the Bible and according to the Holy Spirit. Be blessed, be encouraged, and remember that God is always good. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends so that they can know what this statue means as well. And always remember that God is always good. Until the next time, this is Brother Ray. Bye-bye.